Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's bright and early, mind, body, and soul, daily discipline. I just want to read from the, a book that I'm writing. This is the current book that I'm working on. This is just a small story from chapter 7. I was working on this last night pretty late. This is the third draft of this book. So I'm going through the book over and over and over with several drafts, and this is the third draft. I'm starting to tighten up some of the mistakes and flaws. And I've been thinking about this all night. It's an interesting practice to write about stories from our lives, almost like journaling. And we can find meaning in some random experiences that maybe we never found before. So let's just get into it. I just want to read what I wrote, see what your guys' response is. Feel free to give some constructive criticism. Please be nice. So let's just get into it. After the six-day cruise, we checked into the nicest hotel in Egypt, the Mina House Oberoi, known as the Palace at the Pyramids. It was a real palace. When I opened the drapes to look out of the balcony of my room, the main pyramid was staring at me from across the street in all its glory. I couldn't believe the amazing view I had as I lay on my bed. I felt better the next morning and was hopeful that I was getting past the sickness that had ruined my trip up until that point. I spent the day walking around the pyramids and the Sphinx. I took a walk through the neighborhoods of Giza and had a great time seeing the local culture. That night was New Year's Eve. We had VIP tickets to the Millennium Party at the Pyramids. It was a massive music festival with bands and vendors. The headlining act was supposed to be Pink Floyd. I was excited for the evening and for the luck of feeling better. My strength had returned and I was ready to party. I was told to dress up in nice clothes as the hotel's VIP section had a black tie banquet dinner. Limousines were lining up out front to take guests up to the line of canopied tents which were set up by the most fancy hotels in Egypt. When you pay $15,000 per person for a vacation, you get the best seats in the country to see the biggest concert in the world. We drove slowly through the fog on a winding road up the hill to the VIP tents. Along each side of the road were small billboards that were meant as temporary advertisements. Each sign was white with light blue letters written on it in English. Each sign simply said the word sky on it and nothing else. These small white billboards were every 30 feet and littered the side of the road the entire ride up the hill. I was told by the driver that the event was co-sponsored by a cell phone company called Skytel and the signs were their advertisements. He apologized for the unsightly placement in his attempt to be polite and get a good tip. We slowly drove up the hill as each sign with my name on it emerged from the fog one after another. I began to trip out on all the sky signs. I joked that I felt like a celebrity. My grandparents who were with me on the trip, were pleased that I was in a chipper mood for once and gave a hearty laugh at my attempt at humor. At the top of the hill was the complex of white tents that were put up for the various hotels. Inside our massive tent was as luxurious as any five-star restaurant that I had ever seen. Hotel staff were full of smiles, running around serving guests and s seating people at their assigned tables. We sat at a large round table with a plastic looking middle American family from Kansas. The entire family was blonde, rosy cheeks. They were each slightly overweight with their little pudgy noses turned up at the end, giving them a piggish quality. They were very nice people and as wholesome as human beings can possibly be. The father of the family was a rich farmer. They were far from being rednecks but they still had a country folk vibe to them which I liked. The mother was a lifelong housewife and happy to a fault. The brother and sister looked like maternal twins or possibly clones. They each said howdy as they were introduced and I replied the same howdy 
and enjoyed being around some true Americans for the evening. The mother had a diamond necklace that must have been worth tens of thousands of dollars. I didn't think it was real, but my grandmother assured me that it was and that she was stupid for wearing it out in public. My grandmother, in her disgust, also assured me that the ranch mom was probably a narcissist and most likely a bad person for wearing that necklace. It was the size of a goddamn golf ball and had me hypnotized. I plotted all night long on how to snatch that rock off her turkey neck, but never mustered up the guts to do it. The blonde daughter, who was only 18 and very impressed with me, was introduced as Sky. Everyone at the table erupted in laughter and had a good chuckle that we shared the same name. I tripped out on the re repetition of my name and yet another random coincidence. Sky followed me around the entire night, always stuck right at my side. Every time I looked over at her, she was gazing up at me with her piercing baby blue eyes. She was cute, like a human form of Miss Piggy, and her eyes were like laser beams. I couldn't look at her for long without feeling uncomfortable. Each time I glanced over to her, those giant piercing blue eyes were trying to burn a hole through me. She was attached to me for the evening like a shadow. As the concert began, we headed out to the Overlook area, which had a perfect view of the main pyramid and the stage. It was announced that Pink Floyd could not make it into the country because of passport issues. They had scheduled a replacement act to perform instead. Composer Jean-Michel Jarre, a French musician who does symphony compositions with computers and synthesizers, was the new headliner for the evening. He had a laser light show with his program divided into four parts. The title of each aria was flashed on the main pyramid with the laser lights. The four arias were titled Earth, Wind, Fire, and Sky. As the new year turned at midnight, I was standing next to Sky like we were sewn together. We watched the laser light show flash the word Sky across the Great Pyramid in the final aria. Everyone in the observation area began to chant Sky, sky, sky. I started to lose my mind because there were too many skies that night for me to deal with. I was reading way into, way too deep into the events of the evening and became overwhelmed with coincidences. A rush of emotion came upon me and I realized that my entire life had led me up to the, that very moment in time. Every decision that I had ever made and everything I had ever been through had led me to that very spot. I was just a character in a story. I was right where God wanted me to be with a creepy girl from Kansas at the pyramids. It felt like the universe was reaching out to me just to say, hello, I know that you exist. I see you down there struggling. The entire world was rooting for me, chanting my name, literally. I felt a renewed sense of purpose. I looked at my name written on the main pyramid with tears welling up in my eyes. I looked down at Sky, who was gazing up at me like an angel. She was smiling and as, as lovingly and as warmly as anyone has ever looked at me in my entire life. I felt compelled to reply to the universe as it reached out to me. I grabbed Sky's hand and said thank you. We stood there on that overlook with the world celebrating us. Thanks for watching.